Uh, and thank you. Thank you, uh, Professor Samadhi and the College of uh, Palliative Medicine uh, for giving me this opportunity. Um, actually, I didn't know, know that the, this is the first lecture and uh, it's a great privilege that I'm doing the first lecture for you all. Mm -hmm. um, so the first lecture begins with myths. Mithya Mata. Atharuma Mithya Mata Kiyaneka, Mama Palavinatam Kadagran and Mithya Mata Honda the Naraka the Kiyaneka Neme. Wunkia Valatino Mithya Mata, Mono other Mithya Mata Atharumikino, Godati, you know, there are lots of myths in 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 the in Wunkia. So we can't discuss every uh, each and everything, but uh, myths also a good uh, uh, facts. Uh, for learning, but those are false facts. Facts are not a very deal. I'm taking the topic of the Ganagana Pulua. Um, so, so myth, uh, what is myth? Uh, it is described in Oxford Dictionary as something that many people believe, but that does not exist or it is false. Okay, so. Uh, Many people believe, but it, it does not exist. But and also it can be a false fact. Um, this is just my thinking. Magesh uh, Vena so, Vadiyam Mithya Mata, Tiyana Eregatama Greek mythology. Right? So, in a Greek mythology, Tibba Podi Katavak Kiyanam Papita Danata Iganagana. That Telepus was a hero of ancient Greece who fought in the Trojan War. And his leg was pierced by Achilles. This is actually a warrior. Again, a certain kami make it to our actually stand and also name after that because it's very strong. Um, and this uh, actually this uh, this telepus gave me wound decker remained unhealed for eight years. At a speaking end of a wound decker, our do attack more on the wound. After that, this telepus visited. The oracle at Delphi, oracle mean a pelanka or a kibuto, sastra balana, maya melavagi balana tana. And at that point, uh, they have told that if you go to the uh, say, uh, person who inflicted the injury, may may tuali karapu, pujila langatamagu, titra hundagaragana pulangela, and then the telepus uh, went to meet the Achilles, right, who was his enemy, the Agitarakare. And uh, what the telepath, uh, what the Achilles did was he scraped the uh, spear. spear So and then the wound healed. So the uh, the nowadays actually we know that we use a lot of metallic salt to heal the wound. So for example, um, silver, zinc. This spelling is wrong. Sorry, and the copper. Kind of lots of metals are used today, uh, and the metal salts uh, and the met metal nanoparticles, nanocrystals used in the wound care in today. But this is for just a beginning, and, and it is uh, please don't misunderstand. It is not to say the myths are good. And this is that ancient picture where this is the Achilles and the uh, the injured person who the, the scraping of the spear. Um, so, uh, so what are the myths uh, in Sri Lanka about the wound care? There are so many. Actually, I uh, uh, taken this one from the Tusita. Um, so there are so many, but I I, I would like to discuss few. Uh, first one is: Should we use antibiotic to the chronic wounds? And should we use expensive dressing? Or the are the expensive dressing always better? Guda Kwatina Eva Hundad wound care dressing. Eva gave a 
ගොඩක් හොඳ වටින එකක් හැම තුවාලයකටම තුවාලයක තියෙන සියලුම අවස්ථාවලට ඇතිද ඒ වගේම අපි හිතමු if there's no progression තුවාලේ හොඳ වෙන්න මෙන්න නැහැ එතකොට අපි යූස් කරනවා ඊළඟට වඩා වටිනා ඊළඟට වටිනා හොඳ ඩ්‍රෙසින් එක ඒක හරිද ඒ වගේ some people thinks ගෙදර බෙහෙත් දැම්මොත් ඒක හරි නැහැ home dressing are bad and also some people think if you he- if you heal this wound there will be another one coming somewhere else e wage ma tuwalayak honda wen netta some people i have met many in anuradhapura behet dala dala avurudu vissattiya kiyana kal yanawa ite passe kohoyata behet danna yanne nae meka mage karme kiyala hitala gedarata wela innawa e wage ma thamai uh deshiya sah alternative methods api ewa කොයි විදිහටද පාවිච්චි කරන්න ඒ වලේ තියෙන මිතොලොජිකල් ෆැක්ට්ස් සමහර අය අතරම මේ තුවාලෙකට බෙහෙත් තුවාලෙකට දෙන්න මේ කැන්සල් වලට අපි දන්නවා හරියටම කරගන්න නැහැ විවිධ විවිධ දේවල් කරගෙන ආපස්සේ ඇඩ්වාන්ස් ස්ටේජ් එකට ආවම තමයි හරි ප්‍රතිකාරයකට යොමු වෙන්නේ ඉතින් මීට වඩා ගොඩාක් මිතොලොජිකල් ෆැක්ට්ස් තියෙනවා මේකේ බං ඇත්තටම ලෙච්ච එක යන්න කලින් කලින් කියන්න ඕනේ මේවා ඔළුවේ තියාගන්න මේවයි තියෙන ප්‍රශ්න ඉදිරි ලෙච්චර්ස් එක ඊටම පැහැදිලිව ගොඩක් පැහැදිලිව ඩිස්කස් කරනවා අනිත් අපේ රිසෝස් පර්සන්ස්ලා ඉතින් ඒක වටිනවා මම හිතන්නේ හම්බෙන් හරි මේ මිත්ස් ටිකක් පළවෙනි ලෙච්ච එක විතර ආපු ගැන ඒක අතකින් ඇ තින් ඉට්ස් අ ගුඩ් තින් okay first thing uh, sh- uh, antibiotic should be used in all answer is not always right so then when to use ehana api koi vilawa de tuwala wakata antibiotic patan ganni then godak wala ta ward tool dekala thiyena chronic tuwala chronic wounds thiyena samahanga kwalawata antibiotics unnecessarily dena etakota eka මිත් එකක් අපි you shouldn't give antibiotic to everyone um එහෙනම් අපි කාටද දෙන්න ඕනේ so uh, we should give uh, clinically infected wound right? so usually if there's a clinically infected wound we should give systemic antibiotic therapy ඒ වගේම clinically uninfected wounds and there's a healing as expected do not require antibiotic so api tuwale behet karagara yanota eka api hitana widiyata lassana granule tray gena enawa podi slap pramana ekeh me hen tiyenawa etakota api kalabawala antibiotic denna onne api expect karapu widihata isserahata yanawa clinically infected wound ekak api attrama antibiotic ekak denna one indication ekak හැබැයි the the problem අපි මේ හිතන තරම්ම ලේසි නැහැ කොහොම මේ අපිට වෙන් කරගන්න ඉන්ෆෙක්ට් වෙච්ච තුවාලය පරණ තුවාලය from the ඉන්ෆෙක්ට් නොවන පරණ තු ක්‍රොනික් වුන්ඩ් එක but it is very easy to identify the infected acute wound from the infected non infected acute wound ඔයාලා හැමෝම දන්න විදියට even at a chronic wound like sometimes it is very difficult to differentiate between chronic um, infected to so in, in uh, non infection e wageema api dannawa godak pelawata tuwalet dekka gaman hamadeema samara kattiya sob ekak aragena culture ekak ganna eka hama welema awachcha idda right අතර මේක හැම වෙලේම අවශ්‍ය නැහැ මොකද සුපර්ෆිෂියල් පොරෝරල් එක තමයි ගොඩක් කලාවට ඒකේ තියෙන්නේ එතකොට ඒක හැම වෙලේම අවශ්‍ය නැහැ ඉදිරියේදී ගොඩක් වෙලා දැනගන්න ලැබෙයි මොන තැන් වලද ගන්නේ මොන අවස්ථාවද ගන්නේ ඒක මොනවද ක්‍රමවේද තියෙන්නේ මේ කල්චර් මීඩියා එකක් ගන්න ඒ වගේම ගොඩාක්ම වැදගත් කාරණයක් තමයි ඉතින් මේ කරුණු ගොඩක් හිතුවාම අපි තුවාලයක් ප්‍රතිකාර කරනකොට තුවාලයක ප්‍රතිකාර කරනකොට we need to have multi disciplinary approach හැමෝගෙම උපදෙස් ගන්න බලන්න විශේෂයෙන්ම මයික්‍රෝබයොලොජි සම්බන්ධයෙන් 
ලොකු සහයෝගයක් මේ මල්ටි හැම කට්ටිගේම ගන්න ඕනේ එතකොට තමයි ඒක සක්සස් එක වෙන්නේ සෝ මම ඉස්සල කිව්ව වගේ ඇකියුට් ඉන්ෆෙක්ෂන් එකක අපි දන්නවා ඉන්ෆ්ලමේෂන් එකේ තියෙන ඔක්කොම ඒ කාඩිනල් ෆීචර්ස් තියෙනවා එතකොට ක්‍රොනික් වුන්ඩ් එකකත් සමහර ක්‍රොනික් වුන් හොඳටම හොඳටම ඉන්ෆෙක්ෂන් ඉන්ෆෙක්ටඩ් නම් they have uh, the cardinal features of acute inflammation like patient hondati no then kapalma they get the pain e wageema watte ratu vela ena erithima atha tiyala beluwama they get the heat and also they get the saravelite no they get the parula exude those are cardinal signs of infection but from chronic wound these cardinal symptoms not be very uh, uh, prominent හොඳට පෙනෙන්නේ නැහැ සමහර වෙලාවට. ඉතින් ඒ වගේ වෙලාවට අපි ක්‍රොනික් වුන්ඩ් එකක් ඉන්ෆෙක්ටඩ් ද නැද්ද කියලා දැනගන්න සමහර ක්ලිනිකල් ෆීචර්ස් යූස් කරන්න පුළුවන්. ඒත් තවමත් සමහර විට වල හරියටම දැනගන්න අමාරුයි. සමහර ඔකේ. දැන් සමහර ඒවා ඕවර්ට් ඉන්ෆෙක්ෂන්. ඕවර්ට් කියන්නේ අපිට හරි පැහැදිලිව පේනවා. එතකොට ඒකේ ලෝකල් බෝම් පේන් එක වැඩි වෙනවා. රතු එරිදීම ඒ වගේම ඉඩීම and also increasing malodor the patient ke odor ek experience ekin danna man un kya karna ek tuwalayak ek paara odor odor full wenawa ganda gahanna ganna etakata e kiyanne api dannawa there is a infection going on uh, and also purulent discharge as i said previously covered infection covered infection can it dual infection at the no you know take a very much not evident hotama infect the netda kiyala apita kiyanna bari taram ekata thiyena namuthe e walage thi api kohomada infect the netda kiyala clinically andura ganni dal or da granulation tissue e wagema excessive exudate wenna patan ganna e wagema sometime they get delayed healing and what is called epithelial bridging and pocketing uh and also wound breakdown and enlargement then udaharana the suchakala wound ekak nan eka breakdown wenawa samata edges macerate wegena yana tuwale lok wenawa eba e wage patient probably complaining pain right uh etakota chronic wound ekak infection ne thiyena nadda balala thamai api antibiotic use karanna oni uh in this wound you can see infected granulation tissue unhealthy granulation tissue those look very dark and slough uh, and some uh, probably the exudate uh, erythema around you can see mama hitane me wachana tika api poddak danagattot hondai kiyala initial stage the contamination the contamination kiyanne me the contamination to systemic infection yanagota clinical signs wala severity ke wedi wenawa so if there's a contamination of the wound wound is is not going to show anything uh, so it's just presence of non replicating microorganism bacteria non replicating within nathi bacteria vetherinna colonization so second thing colonization colonization mean presence of replicating organisms adherent to the bone so this fact is important in acute wound care as well for example if you get a acute wound with contamination uh, from a bicycle accident aquila tuwala vela valid ekka ena contaminated so contamination will actually have in the non proliferating non replicating microorganism therefore you eliminate them very quickly how quickly within six, at least within 6 hours you should wash them properly remove the, all the debris and uh, and remove the uh, ragged edges uh, uh, so why we should do because if you keep the non replicating bacteria on the wound wound that is the contamination of the wound then this bacteria start proliferate that is called colonization so 
the critical colonization, what is critical? The bacteria start uh, multiplying and increase the bacterial burden. Um, and and uh, the clinical signs and symptoms of critical cause are delayed healing. Increased serous sex. Someone speaking, I think. Um, changing the color, right? And then, then started very evident uh, clinical sign is the local infection, right? That is the features of acute inflammation started. Classical signs of infection, redness, erythema, warmth, swellings are present. Often described as bacterial burden, burden more than 10, uh, 10 to the power 5, right? Organism per gram of tissue or uh, cubic millimeter or pus. And systemic infection, um, at, as the words say, watching in the systemic infection, the uh, patient will get the systemic signs. Um, and uh, and dangerous thing is they can go into the sepsis, right? So and lead, can lead to multi organ failure and even to the death. So contamination, colonization, critical colonization, local infection, systemic infection, those. Uh, Processes should be think uh, should be uh, should identify uh, uh, to decide on uh, whether the patient needs antibiotics or not. Mm, the other thing is uh, the controversy of tropical topical antibiotic antimicrobials. Um, there are lots of uh, topical antimicrobial which is used in the current practice. Uh, antimicrobials antibacterials and actually those uh, topical antibacterial reduce the bacterial bio burden right so uh, however the the researchers and meta analysis uh, suggests uh, there are few proven indication for topical antimicrobial. However, use of newer, relatively non-toxic antiseptics such as cadoxamidine or silver dressing um, is sometimes is preferable to the topical antibiotics which we use to inject into the uh, virus system. Uh, this is from other my references. So the cadoxamidine, the, the, when you get the iodine, we have two forms, uh, povidine iodine and the cadoxamidine. So povidine iodine is the, what is we call betadine at a trade name. And also the cadoxamidine is what is we call um, iodoso is again a trade name. So what we should know is, uh, we don't want to use antibiotic to each and every chronic wound. So, uh, so what we should do, we should uh, clinically suspect the infection. And when necessary, we should uh, take the uh, soaps or, or puncture biopsy or deep tissue cultures. And, and we, we must take multidisciplinary opinion, especially microbiologists um, on deciding on uh, antibiotic therapy. Um, so the second myth that I'm going to discuss is expensive dressings are better. Some people think expensive dressing are better. Um, so I've seen this in uh, various wound care centers. Um, uh, they actually use a very expensive dressing, uh, dressings, uh, uh, thinking that they is, is improve the healing much faster. Uh, but this fact is actually wrong, as you all know. Uh, so if I ask, uh, what are the dressings that we can use for the first spoon? And what are the dressings that we can use for the second moon? Okay. So the first wound is, as you can see, it is well granulated and having a very nice edges. Tissues are 
very good. There are no signs of infection. So that is called time, right? One thing we first, when you should, should when you see, you should T, time is a T for tissues. You should look at the tissue. I for infection, E for exudate. So this is not having very much of exudate, very optimal moisture. And, um, but it's very difficult to say from the, actually uh, from a photograph and uh, E for the edge. So if you look at this one, you don't have to use very expensive dressing. Um, just, uh, you know, nourish this one with the uh, normal saline would be adequate, right? So, and ilangata meka, me wundeke gattahama, the slough. You know, make the photo keep up what a pain in air in the edges can look good and comment can be, but anyway, there's no infection. It's got a sloughing agent, very expensive than the hypertonic saline might work, in my opinion. Right? So, those we were itam, adu we the making karana pulva, nam, loku eva dala, uh, good up, we then karakila, loku tail mak nah, right? So, the use of very expensive dressing is not the option. But you have to understand the wound pathophysiology, which we will, which you going to learn in future lectures. Toilet uh, dekho, toh mama mukadda pe use karan dumal hondama sa hondama ekar hondama mei not the expensive. E toile avastha or tagale pe na hondama ekar. Apni kaho mat karne ke liye apni idhiye the idhiye lectures valing igana karna, right? Toh kora expensive dressings. Be careful using it. It costs not only the patient. At actually, at the end, it's cost to the country. Uh, third one, one advanced dressing suit all the wounds. All wounds. I mean, okay. Api mehmi to ekka advanced. Hundo vati na ekka tuwal dressing ekka tuwal ekka hema vasta otam galape na hogi. Right? Hemi ka kne hai? Hemi ka tamu hoga na hai? So. Uh, so in my things like the times, what I see is tuale gattaham tuale ka slough tina make a slough. Apni tikak behed daga na pe mukak kariyab daan on the dressing ka daga ne ana kotha tikka tikka slough fine mila. At the end, apni target tikka granulation tissue you know. So when you see a wound, apni highly gran slough a sloughy wound, partially sloughy wound, and then gradually. 100% granulated wounds, you know. So, uh, so, me to not a hurry and I could there's no city kids city. Uh, can I disturb you? Actually, there is a message uh, because there are some Tamil people, uh, they want to uh, conduct in uh, English, English okay. only. Yeah, ah, thank okay, you. thank you. So, uh, sorry about the, the, the thing. I have actually initially we thought uh, doing it uh, bilingually. Uh, sorry, uh, I didn't know it's my mistake. Uh, okay, so um, so the third one is one advanced dressing suit for all wounds, right? So when you come to the wounds, um, this is my thing actually. This is how I see wounds in my wards. Uh, when I see a wounds, I see the whether the wound is slough, right? So this wound is yellowish. So it's in the slough. So, so you will learn later what is slough, uh, how do I do the necros tissue and all the things, right? So at the moment, we'll think this is slough. And when you treat this one, it gradually improves. And and at the end, you get the this nice granulated red uh, wound that avatar that is our target. So there is no uh, single wound or single dressing that we can use for all three stages. So when you have, uh, when you do the dressings, uh, uh, as it progress, you may have to change the dressing accordingly. And in the patient, when you check, get the patients also, uh, the stages of the wound different. So there's no one advanced dressing which suits all wounds uh, to cater with, right? So the other thing is uh, what I think is about the exudate. These are you will you will learn these facts uh, later uh, very well. So the second thing I see is whether this is an exudating wound. That means whether the moisture is very 
uh, high. The, there are wounds with uh, weeping wounds. They get lots of fluid out. So, so need uh, you need to think about uh, uh, something that absorbing that fluid to treat. At the end, at the at the end, there are very dry wound. So there are no single wound dressing to use exudating wound and the dry exudating wound. So that we have to have different wounds, right? I th I already discussed whether it is an infected or non-infected, right? So accordingly, you you should use. And finally, we need to think whether this is whether this is a, a special type of wound, right? Uh, for example, as you all know, diabetic wounds management is totally different. We but we have to stick to the basic principles, uh, and and uh, for example, uh, whatever the wound care products, diabetic foot wounds sometimes not going to heal. So you need to sometimes you need to offload, or you need to put what is called total uh, contact casting, um, and also in the venous ulcers. It's not going to heal whatever the you put. You may have to put uh, foliar dressings or may have to do the uh, definitive surgery, either uh, endovenous lace, ab lace ablation, right? So so there's no such things. Uh, so when you see a wound, you have to think all these things, slough, granulation, exudate, dry, infected, non-infected, or oh, whether this is a special kind of thing. And then we have to think uh, about the dressing and there's no particular one advanced dressing for all these things. So that myth is there, um, so that is wrong. And the fourth thing is if no progression, that means if there's no healing uh, when you do the dressing, uh, then we have to change to a better dressing. Some people think that they start with, uh, for, for example, Metrogel and then more, more advanced dressing and then more advanced dressing and, uh, and, um, and, and advanced and the expensive dressings. So that's not going to work, right? Um, so if the, there's no progression, what you should do actually? Think about it. If there's no progression, then you put the wound care uh, products. And if there's no progression, please think about the pathophysiology and uh, uh, please think about why it is not healing. Probably uh, you, you there must be a, there may be a osteomyelitis underneath. As I previously said, there may be infection going on. Uh, you should know whether this is infection clinically or uh, clinically, or there are other methods of uh, detecting blood, blood tests um, to, to, to see whether this is infected though. Or maybe uh, there may be malignancy uh, going on in the womb. Or there are kind of unusual infection, usually the bacteria, but there are fungal and other infections going on the wound. So when, when whatever the wound product you use is not going to heal. So if there's no progression, you must think whether these things are there. The other things like malnutrition and medication. Um, uh, yeah, so recent actually, I got a patient with fingertip uh, non-healing wound and uh, uh, some people has put various kind of medication and by at the history i i realized that he's uh, he had a renal transplant uh, and on uh, immunosuppression um okay so uh this is uh actually one of my patients i received from a peripheral hospital um so there was an ind done and the uh about months ago and the wound was not healing and sent to me. And what I did was I take the biopsy and then turn out to be a malignant melanoma. Uh, although it's not looks blackish, but uh, the histology it was a malignant melanoma with inguinal uh, lymphadenopathy. So, uh, and this wound, you can see this wound as a rocker bottom appearance, right? So it's a diabe advanced diabetic wound foot wound, charcoal uh, foot, and uh, uh, someone has removed uh, this part thinking that is a lump. So it's not should happen because what you should do is you should do, do the offloading or custom made uh, footwear um, and or, or non-contact non casting. Uh, 
uh, rather than uh, doing things. And the thing is, you should be able to, to under identify. And these are very common in Anurodhapur area. The people comes with non-healing wounds and people dress it and dress and dress and choose various kind of dressing and but it's not going to heal and this is actually leishmaniasis um, uh, you should suspect if you have such wounds uh, non healing wounds uh, disease uh, venous ulcer had been there for long duration and if you see the edges you can see it is rolled edges or everted edges so if you see this kind of thing, you need to get a biopsy and this is a, an squamous cell carcinoma. So whatever the wound care product you use, whatever the advanced thing you use, this is not going to heal unless you treat this malignancy. So uh, the other thing is home dressings are bad. Some people think that the wound care at the home is bad. Um, however, it is very cost effective and psychologically the patient uh, get very much uh, improvement because they are with the family and she is with the familiar environment. So uh, the home dressings, uh, therefore, uh, I think uh, it's, it's mainly the less burden to the our health staff. If you go to the surgical ward, most of our nurses are busy with the uh, wound care. So uh, if you're done, if you're having a very, very good program for home-based uh, wound care uh, things, actually these uh, unnecessary burden could be avoided and actually it's, it's ha ha helped us to uh, save lots of money uh, to the country. And for those things, actually we need the education and also be, happy, uh, be able to frequently review Right. Um, the patient education is an important thing. Uh, we should educate a patient uh, how to do the wound care and uh, things that. Uh, okay, so uh, I will skip the second one. And the some people think karma is. Uh, uh, the, is is my karma. So is some people don't do. For example, I will give this true example. Uh, recently, I did the uh, the sixty year old gentleman actually from Kakirawa. He had a forearm uh, suppurating wound uh, on and off uh, abscess coming and rupturing uh, for twenty years, and several surgeries been done and on and off uh, uh, yellowish and blackish uh, uh, stuff coming from the wound. And uh, several IND was done over the years and uh, over the last 20 years. And uh, he basically abandoned the treatment and he was, I I'm sure he was thinking, this is my karma. And actually we were able to excise the whole wound and sent to the histology. And it was actinomycosis. Uh, we preoperatively also, we thought it and uh, referred to the microbiologist and uh, he had a, a Kind of long term penicillin therapy, uh, uh, according to the microbiologist's advice. Now he's happy and doing well. Uh, there's no karma, and we need to think as clinician, mm -hmm. a scientific uh, clinician, and the, those who are practicing evidence based medicine. Um, we need to uh, uh, think about the pathophysiology behind, behind the non healing wounds. So this is. Uh, why you are here now. Uh, finally, um, indigenous method or various things coming. Uh, so I think this uh, for in this, I'm actually uh, forward in my views. Um, uh, I think uh, uh, the people taken the uh, taken the indigenous uh, things in the wrong way, right? So they, they, they don't use uh, proper medication. For example, if there's a cancer, they sometimes directly go to the uh, Ayurvedic treatments and comes with advanced disease, right? Um, 
the, why this happen because the the the, the they don't uh, go to the what is called evidence based medicine so the, we can make the evidence indigenous methods also evidence based so uh, that is what is uh, the scientific practice uh, so non scientific things uh, should not be practiced in our wound care so we have to have kind of research level 1 or maybe good level of evidence to uh, to cater our patients. Uh, so one of the good example is, this is uh, papaya or papul. So it has uh, uh, lots of uh, pepin enzyme. So it is a very good um, desloughing. It, it digests the protein. Pepin is an enzyme that digests the protein. So actually we use when when I when I was in candy, we use papain, uh, papo, this uh, papaya uh, to wound wound uh, sloughy wounds, and it is very effective. And now this there are evidence enough evidence, and they have made papain uh, together with urea ointments, and also they are pure papain also. So now the this indigenous practice now turn into the uh, evidence based uh, practice. Uh, and also bee honey. So bee honey is again uh, used widely um, in indigenous things and now it has come to uh, uh, the wound care uh, stream as evidence-based product, product. But in Sri Lankan medicine, uh, bee honey actually we can't uh, use as uh, because there's a risk of uh, botulinum, uh, prostatidium botulinum, spores can persist in the uh, bee honey. So when, when you use when if you are using for the at least for the research purpose, we need to uh, gamma irradiate it and uh, uh, make it sterile. Uh, however, there are lots of evidence and there are commercial preparation available. Um, and if you see this one, if you go to the sea, you probably see in these uh, things. These are seaweed, right? So alginate dressing, calcium alginate dressing, are made from uh, seaweed. So if you see a very exudating wound, weeping wound, or very wet, uh, moist wound, so alginate dressings are very good because they absorb the exudate very much. So alginate dressings are made from um, seaweed. So these are naturally existing. So these are examples of how we can make uh, natural things, indigenous things to, uh, to uh, evidence-based practice. And actually, we have in our country lots of these kind of things. We need a lot of research. And actually, we can, there, if we can do these things, we can reduce lots of uh, healthcare costs uh, in wound care. In UK, about 4% of the healthcare expenditure is on wounds. So I think we are not expending that much, but um, uh, so we are not uh, economically prosperous country. So uh, I think uh, it's, it's as professionals, uh, nurses, uh, doctors, uh, scientists, we all should think all this about all these things uh, when uh, when treating our patients. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, Dr. Kitsiri. Um, okay. Uh, any questions, any clarifications, anything that you want to ask? I will open the floor to anybody to raise your hands and um, ask any question. Please make this opportunity. Uh, take this opportunity uh, and use the maximum. You can ask uh, questions or if you all have any clarifications, please ask. Uh, Susit also here because uh, yeah. I think he uh, also is a very good uh, 
uh, wound care practitioner. So, yeah. yeah. Nobody is asking questions. Uh -huh. to the other one, isn't it? In contrast to doctors, one, I mean, we can't uh, stop <laughs> at, even at 11 o'clock. So, Sita, me, api singaling una tahanda pulang kela kiya mande. Oh, oh na basau king hand de malan tiren ne. so I have a doubt. Okay, okay, please. Uh, it's like a myth, like uh, if a person, uh, for an example, if a person uh, think uh, that uh, uh, psychologically, uh, whether he have a wound and he think that uh, it will cure, uh, yeah, it will cure very soon. So uh, the people say that uh, uh, if the if any person uh fit in uh, psychologically the positive aspect so it can cure very fast is it true or not um uh, i will answer this question and thank you very much for the question actually um yes. i will answer a question like this actually the wound care yes. uh, and we will talk this thing later as well uh, wound care has a, a big uh, 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 contribution uh, or the big uh, 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 portion uh, of psychology, right? So yeah. we have treated the patients uh, with the wound. Um, Tusit actually used to say, uh, the patient, the wound is not the one we should treat. You, we have to use the patient. So the patient as a whole, uh, when you get, if someone has a chronic wound, especially, they get psychologically disturbed. So we need to um, improve the psychology anyway. So this improves the, uh, I mean, their uh, uh, minds and hormones levels might have some benefit indirectly to the wound healing, but there are no such, uh, you know, clinically provable or scientifically provable or randomized trial to say. But uh, obviously, if you think the science, um, so if someone's mind is better, so whole body will be better. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Jani, can I share something? Uh, I need the privileges to share. What do you want to share? No, you can share. You can share. Uh no, can uh cannot start screen share while the other participant is sharing. So um, then uh, Dr. Kitsi like, has to yeah stop sharing. Yeah, okay, now you can. All right, okay. So I just wanted to know now these participants, are you all uh, uh, practicing wound care day in your day-to-day -day practice or which kind of, uh, you know, nursing stations you all are attached to? Are you all uh, uh, getting these wounds in your nursing practice for the dressing and things? Ogulu may Vedakar Nathangula, then nurses love with theatre, Vedakar Nathangula, Ogulant of wounds, sick Vedakaran, Sid the Vino, the Eva Dekalati, you know, the dressings again and make here for again. Yes. You all can, you all can open the mic and tell. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Yes, okay. Yes, sir, we are practicing. Okay. 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 Yeah, that's it. Go ahead. 
Yeah, I think did did everyone see uh, what I was sharing? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, we can see that. Yeah, what do you what do you all think this is? Turning. Is something turning, sir? Somebody. Yeah, it, it's effectively do, doing a turning, but <laughs> what, what is it? Uh, I think the spiritual aspect of it. <laughs> yeah, it's a big deal. And this, is, this was actually a, 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 a limb with peripheral vascular ligament. <laughs> Both vessels are gone. Sorry, there's another one. Wait. See? Can you see the red line? They have been acting like a tourniquet. Uh, so see, actually here in Anuradhapura, lots of people come with this kind of thing. If they have a lovely wound, they put a uh, uh, that is spiritual null. Yeah, that's. I mean, I mean, it, it's it's uh, we now we might laugh at it, but it's for them. They don't know, <laughs> so. Definitely not the place to uh, <laughs> tightly bind the Piritnul. No, it. <laughs> so these things are very real. So. Uh... Sita, we can't hear you. No, wait, I'm, I'm uh, trying to share something else. Wait, wait a minute. Yeah, this is something I found in the internet. See, it says fever is not a Sign of kefraxone deficiency. So, likewise, uh, as Dr. Kitsiri earlier uh, uh, explained a lot, a wound is not a sign of uh, antibiotic deficiency. You get what I mean? I mean, uh, uh, people come and ask for uh, wound healing message. So there's no Velenabeta, nobody has found it yet. And antibiotics are not wound healing medicine. Is that, and, uh, am I correct, uh, uh, Dr. Hitsiri? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, exactly correct, actually. Yeah. People, people actually ask for the medication. The um, same thing actually here. Well, in a Karal Lila, no. Karal Tia Khan Lila, Adiparagamu, Komari, me, me, me. This Karal Dunne Vatne. Yeah, that bad chera, yeah, Karal Dunne. So that should not be the case. Uh, so, uh, when you all practice. As the, the nurses, what uh, you, you, uh, you, one of your uh, main uh, uh, components of work, I think, is health education. Am I correct, uh, Madam? Uh, Madam Janaki, am I correct? Uh, it's, it's one of their uh, key functions, isn't it? 
can you please repeat it what no what i'm mean? asking is uh, uh, is health education a key function of a nurse mm -hmm. is it part of their job yes everybody's all the health care yeah. providers should uh, do the health education actually now uh, we are not telling health education we call now health promotion so health promotion in this aspect so uh, i mean uh, i think uh, nurses were encounter not enter, encounter they spend uh, quite a lot of time than doctors i think with the patients so uh, it, each and every encounter you can do a bit of uh, health education or health promotion so uh, tell them that uh, there are there are no such thing as when you when a, uh, when you are doing a dressing change you can educate the patient that uh, there is no such thing as uh, wound healing medicine it's not yet invented even and uh, antibodies don't ask for antibodies antibodies are not uh, wound healing uh, wound healing medicine they are not wound healing agents and uh, one other problem i see is there are uh, quite a few practitioners who put uh, iv injections in uh, topically there's uh, i mean it's not good to mention names and places so even in colombo gampaha yakkala i don't know uh, uh, other places there are quite a number of people who are putting merapenem uh, you name it everything is put uh onto the wound bed as a dressing some people just wash with merapenem so that is i think it i don't know uh, what do you think uh, dr kitsir is there a, is there any indication to wash a chronic wound with uh, an iv uh, antibiotic no actually there's a, as i mentioned in the lecture there's a uh, there's an article on this uh, topical anti uh, anti uh, microbials so that clearly says uh, it, it, you should use the antibiotic. I mean, uh, it, it's much better. I mean, uh, if you really want to use something uh, to kill the bacteria, to use antiseptics like uh, cadoxomers or I, I mean, silo based things. And uh, using this kind of things are really, uh, I mean, harmful and it makes the bacteria resistant. Uh, and also the cost, if you use Mirabana. So these are really unnecessary and unethical practice, I think. So I have seen uh, the, some people using the gentamicin actually. Actually, when I, as soon as I passed the medical faculty, um, actually we used to practice in the small places. So that what we call locums. And then uh, that practitioner asked me to inject uh, uh, gentamicin uh, to the wounds. And uh, I think it's it's been a practice. So those are wrong things we shouldn't do. And that, that won't improve the wound care, uh, wound healing process. Um, this is good that you put that fever is not a uh, sign of sephrax on deficiency. So yeah, it's very correct. Yeah, I think uh, we should, we should uh, I mean, vehemently uh, cancel these out i mean these these practices should not exist on this earth uh, the fact that uh, if i'm uh, if i'm mistaken just correct me i uh, as i as far as i can remember linosolid was the last antibiotic to come uh, am i correct the yeah, last is a, is a, yeah i think so so yeah is it so, you no, uh, uh, no. My point is that uh, Lina Solid, uh, uh, it was introduced in uh, two thousand uh, somewhere around two thousand fourteen, thirteen or fourteen. So, I remember there was a report in two thousand fifteen. I can't remember exactly, but uh, just after about a one about an year of introduction, uh, Lina Solid uh, uh, had uh, intermediate resistance mm -hmm. so that was the last one to come and uh, 
in uh, 2017 uh, i had the opportunity to go go, go to the uh, uh, to who one of the conferences uh, so they are they were discussing only about you know the the whole uh, the pharma sector was also there they were not discussing about uh, inventing or producing new antibiotics they were totally 100% targeting on uh, uh, drugs for non communicable diseases basically the communicable diseases are gone for them this, that's not a business at all so uh, i don't think we will be getting uh, new antibiotics rather new uh, uh, diabetes medication and hypertension new anti cholesterol drugs and all that but uh, not antibiotics so this is what we got and this is what we are left with so we have to protect all these say this is like protecting the only uh, say about 1000 bullets are left and you have about 3 4 uh, guns and you are facing an enemy so large like uh, 100000 strong so this is this is like that so it's just a matter of time if you if we do these uh, wrong practices and uh, we'll run short of ammunition and the whole army will come and not kill us. They will make uh, mincemeat sambol out of us. The, the enemies you can understand what the enemy is. You know, uh, the, the, uh, the bacteria, they are very fast to uh, adapt. When you watch... Uh, Correct me if I'm wrong. If uh, when we wash a wound and when we throw out uh, these antibiotic solutions into the into uh, garbage and to sewers and all, uh, it's low, very very low in concentration and the the uh, the bacteria can produce uh, and they can uh, produce a, a, a resistant. Uh, uh, you can they can develop resistance and then propagate so then uh, it's not like we uh, we are use when we are using the antibiotics at the correct strength correct uh, dosing uh, iv or the way it should be used so uh, my point is that uh, by misusing antibiotics we are killing our next generation our next generation um, we are leaving them with nothing against the bacteria so it's a sin to see the i mean uh, please may uh, give me a uh, one thing um, uh, so when it comes to the uk uh, where i was practicing last two years um so in in that countries you even you are a doctor you can't buy uh, antibiotics so i think our problem is uh, there are free uh, anyone you know freely buy uh, freely buy the antibiotic so they basically misused it so um, for example some sri lankan when they go to the uk they take antibiotic from here and take get go to there because uh, you you I'm, I'm basically impossible to buy antibiotic uh, whatever you happen right so so those kind of uh, very strict control should be there and uh, since there's no control we as professionals should be very ethical and self conscious mm -hmm. and uh, we should do our thing our our uh, Thing best uh, to the uh, future generation and our children. Yeah. Actually, I uh, I took a lot of time on antibiotics uh, uh, just after Dr. Kitsiri's lecture because uh, I mean this was a topic in the lecture as well, but uh, uh, because we are. Uh, talking to uh, a group of nurses uh, uh, about two weeks back uh, one of the uh, NHSL nurses uh, he brought one of his relatives and uh, just asked me whether uh, doctor should I 
uh, uh, wash this with uh, jetamycin. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's that's actually that's why uh, I, I wanted to uh, uh, take some time on this and uh, drag the uh, all the discussion uh, on it. So, uh, so that's actually I think we have uh, we have made a mark on not using antibiotics. I think uh, whether whether antibiotics should be used or uh, uh, whether antibiotics should be uh, is it okay to use antibiotics uh, on the wound bed or that uh, those questions I think very clearly answered and clearly no. So it's that clear. Uh, I mean, it's it's good to uh, hear from from the audience uh, that uh, it's golden and uh, planted the, the the idea is golden and the idea is planted in you all is that clear I'm not getting any answers, no. It's clear, sir. So you all are clear that in antibiotics. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it not be used. Yes, on... sir. <laughs> sir, in, okay. in, in the in the chat box, so there is a uh, one question, sir, uh, regarding the salt water, whether we can apply to the wound or not. Uh, Dr. Kitsiri, uh, I, what do you think, sir? It's, it, is it uh, advisable or not advisable? Salt water from the uh, home salt, ne? again. So, yes. actually, we, uh, I recently uh, searched for uh, uh, the uh, myths or some, um, some articles, and uh, those are not scientific things. In the internet, they said, don't use sea water to the uh, wounds for some reason. But um, uh, uh, if some stages you can use salt water, for example, if there's a sluffy wound, slough wound, uh, so what is hypertonic saline? It's basically the same. Yes. Hypertonic saline is basically the uh, salt water. So we're using salt water uh, for the wounds. And at the, uh, so in, sometimes you might ask, so then the water that we use to mix the salt is unsterile. That's again wrong because when you get an acute wound, so it's you don't you don't have to necessarily wash the wound with saline. So if you use just tap water and wash it properly, nothing going to happen. And and also, um, some researchers say it's it's equally effective, and some some people say it's it's even better than the saline because if you use was tap water, the people will wash it properly. If you use uh, saline, the, um, because of the cost factor, they, they, they won't use it uh, very much. And similar way, if you want to make the hypertonic saline, just wash, uh, there's dilute it in a, uh, in a clean water, and you can use uh, to the wounds. It's basically the same as uh, hypertonic saline. Uh, yeah. yeah, I can add to that a little bit. Uh, do you have anything else to say? Uh, no, to sit there. Yeah, no, my take is a little different on this. Uh, no, it, it, the hypertonic saline, saline and saline, all that is salt water. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the problem is that our salt is not that clean. Uh, and the, the other problem is people, uh, we don't know what uh, how much they put. Because, uh, and they put uh, hot water, uh, the, uh, salt into hot water, then they put it, because I had, I had about three cases of uh, hot water burns. They have put their feet with wounds uh, into hot uh, hot salt water. Uh, it's a utter mess. So, uh, I actually don't advise on uh, uh, salt water baths for wounds. Uh, Unless they are really uh, a, a sort of uh, understandably educated and all that, then we, we they can follow just what we say. But 
and yeah. Uh, yeah and the other problem with the the, the uh, tap water is it's very good the flowing water is good uh, the problem is uh, say uh, if you uh, see nhsl the tap uh, in front of the uh, dressing room and uh, that area is very dirty the uh, the patient have to walk uh a little bit uh or just wrapping around uh, 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 wrapping something around the wound and uh, come to the dressing room and wait and all that kind of so in that uh, during that time period uh it can get con contaminated because it's very dirty it's, it's uh, a, a lot of uh, uh and other other uh, patients also throwing uh stuff everywhere that sort of thing and uh, if the patient is washing their uh, wound at home and coming to us during the tra uh, transit uh, something can get inoculated or uh, get tattooed so uh, 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 so uh, actually this can be done in the hospital settings uh, for example um, when we in the theater to wound the, to wash the contaminated wound, we at least use about uh, ten to twelve, uh, sometimes more than that, saline bottles. So uh, if you get a, I mean, a proper uh, or oh, kind of water, I mean, cleaning system, tap water system, if you can make inside the theater, um, uh, uh, so so that actually can reduce the uh, a bit of a cost um, and. Uh, but um, the, the what you said was actually very correct. Uh, if you use in the clinic base and uh, OPD systems and um, and if you ask patient to do it, and then it's actually difficult. Yeah, that is the problem. Uh, say for chronic wounds in the op the the, the uh, we have we've been doing this for quite a uh, years now in NHSL. So mm -hmm. I have seen uh, pseudomonas. Uh, uh, con it's like uh, like a menace. They mm. are uh, going from one, one person to another because mm. I mean they they, uh, they flock together uh, to one tap. There are about uh, uh, about 50 dressings, 40-50 dressings to be done. Everybody's flocked together in, in that uh, area and ultimately everybody touches everything. So, uh, in the in the garment clinic setup, it's not really practical. That's what I feel. I mean, it's it's, uh, it's very good to give give a uh, you know like a water treatment to the uh, this uh, to the wound. I mean, uh, flowing water, uh, sort of a bit of a pressure. Uh, it can de slough also. And I mean, uh, if the uh, the the slough part uh, uh, strands are loose. Uh, in my clinic also, I have a setup uh, uh, with a hand shower and all that, but uh, uh, very rarely use use it uh, uh, because now I'm I'm sort of used not to not to uh, do this. But uh, but of course, time to time, it's better to uh, wash the wounds with tap water, flowing good uh, pressurized tap water. There's another question. Uh, is aloe vera good for wound healing? Uh, what do you think? Uh, actually, I have not used it. Uh, some people use for the burns. And um, yeah. Aloe vera is... Uh, I think there, there, there are a few ingredients as well in aloe vera. Uh, in the profunit in uh, NHSL, we uh, tried a uh, few wounds. I mean, basically, what we saw was uh, uh, one thing: it it gives moisture, and that moisture effects actually uh, promotes healing. Uh, we were not very sure whether what the other ingredients did. Uh, so moisture did it, it gives moisture. It's like like a gel. 
So the uh, there was a complication. That's why we sort of stopped it later on. Uh, and we are not right now. We are not really practicing it because the preparation is a little hard. Uh, the complication was uh, new pseudomonas in, uh, infection because mm -hmm. it's uh, it, it's close to the soil and it's already contaminated uh, uh, when we pluck it and uh, uh, we don't know how to you know uh, to what temperature you should heat it you know to to uh, how to wash it to so it's just a problem of how how to prepare it uh, mm. but if you peel it or peel the skin off and get the gel uh, properly without contamination i think it's a good gel dressing uh, sort of a uh, something like a thick gel intracytes sort of thing uh, that is the actually the problem uh, the when you're using natural production. So we can't guarantee the uh, sterility and the bacterial uh, colonization. For example, as I said, uh, the bee honey is having uh, lots of lots of research and uh, it's other than its osmotic activity, it has uh, healing uh, properties. However, you can't use it uh, uh, as it is because uh, it can have uh, uh, clostridium spores. So similar way, uh, you know, even uh, aloe vera may be the same. Um, so we have to, you know, do some studies and make it better. I think that should be the way uh, in it, future. Forward. Definitely, it should be a commercial product, standardized uh, exactly. commercial product. Otherwise, just putting some, put, uh, plucking uh, aloe vera from somewhere and putting it and this is right now, this, that's not going to work. So it's... Uh, uh, the other uh, the, the, uh, there's one other uh, thing about uh, uh, bee honey uh, because it's, uh, you spoke about it uh, this menuka honey is available in uh, as a commercial product I think you, you must have used it uh, but uh, there's another problem with uh, uh, bee honey what we saw was it just starts pouring out because it's so hot here uh these commercial products from europe they just uh, become very uh, very liquidized uh so uh, i mean we in uh, sri lanka we don't have a, a homegrown uh, uh, sterilized bee honey market mm -hmm. so uh we are using bee honey we have to go for uh, such products so the problem with such products is they are just, they just uh, start to pour out and attract uh, uh, insects as well. Uh, mm. uh, have you had that uh, problem? I think uh, I, I have had this, this problem for about uh, three, four times. Yeah, yeah. when I was intern, uh, actually, with my registrar and myself did a small study on um, bee honey uh, and its effect on MRSA. Um, so what we did, so we did was we uh, uh, made some uh, bee honey um, Israel using gamma radiation at uh, uh, atomic uh, energy authority. There's a there was a thing a machine, and then we do, did it. And uh, that sample we used to the patient and uh, check the uh, um, I mean pre colonized patient, and then we put the uh, these things and uh, tested. It was not a you know randomized control thing. Uh, this just a study, but it, it actually basically red eradicated uh, the MRSA very well. Um, um, and um, the other thing is uh, the what you said uh, was uh, insect uh, uh, they, they comes and also uh, it uh, it causes some pain to the patient some uh, you know I don't know why is some they, they some people complain pain hmm. and yeah I have also come across that uh, a bit of a tingling sensation they are sort of uh, un uncomfortable. It's a, is that what yeah, you were that what saying? Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And there's another question from uh, our student. Um, they ask in Suja Wound, what is the best dressing? Um, is it uh, dry dressing, podinide, normal saline, surgical spirit, um, etc.? That's what one of our students' uh, question. Um, 
I think uh, we will uh, discuss the how to select the dressings uh, considering the nature of the wound in future very well. Um, so I think Tusita can I answer this one. Yeah, uh, I will. Yeah, shall I uh, ask another question on this? Actually, if if the wound is sutured, do you actually need a dressing? Do you actually need a, a, a special dressing, whatever, any, anything to be put there? Yeah, good thing, actually. Can you get uh, uh, approximated properly? Yeah, the what I think is, I mean, uh, my answer is, uh, so I don't use any dressing. I, I do lots of thyroidectomies. Um, for the thyroidectomies, I, I don't use any dressing. Sometimes I use a sterile strip just to approximate the wound so that the the I don't use much uh, subcuticular uh, absorbable stitches underneath so that the, you know, that absorbing reaction causes a scar. So I put a sterile strip to approximate the wound, but I don't put any dressing. Uh, but mm, sometimes we see uh, some uh, oozing of blood and exudates, uh, and that time actually we need to have something to absorb it. So temporarily we put some uh, dressing. Uh, likewise, I think uh, the dressing for a wound is to absorb the exudate and um, uh, and uh, yeah, for the sutured wound is that mainly. But, but when it's it a pad, sorry, it just needs a pad if, if it's if you are suspecting, yeah, 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 just needs a pad. Or if, if uh, uh, nothing is going to, if you are sure that nothing is going to come out, just a sterile, uh, 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 a transparent uh, 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 film or something to see what's happening underneath, like mm -hmm. and to protect the uh, the, the suture holes. Exactly. Nowadays, and uh, and UK, it's very uh, common now. They use tissue glues. Uh, as soon as you do the suturing, you put the glue. Um, then they don't use any uh, dressing. And also, the I don't know whether it's okay to use the trade names. Oxide uh, that spray. Um, it also I think is a good thing. Kind of uh, I mean, uh, uh, thin uh, as you said, thin transparent dressing to uh, see the wound. There's a question, another one. Uh, how to use Condis as a wound cleaner and how it is, I think, uh, how it's used, how, it's, how to how to use it like, yeah. Condis as a wound cleaner. Um, do you have any experience, uh, Tusita? Are you using that one? No, I I actually say not to use it. Mm. So um, actually, I also not frequently use, but recently, uh, uh, recently, sorry, I get a. Uh, hello. Hello. Hello, can you we, all Yes, we can hear you. I got a call. Um, so um, recently I got a patient, actually he's from UK, uh, Indian person, a UK Indian person uh, to my private hospital with a, a, an infected eczema uh, with cellulitis. So um, so the my dermatologist uh, used uh, Condis uh, water to wash it uh, daily and to apply whatever his uh, her, um products and also i have seen some uh, surgeons they use condis bath to uh, diabetic wounds uh, before applying whatever the dressings uh, but i don't know their success uh, and things like that condis is uh, condis compresses used used for uh, the uh, to treat eczema so that is like uh, a, a tiny bit of condis in water, like pinkish, not not that uh, pur purple color, uh, well, very concentrated condis. Uh, it's uh, uh, this purple color thing, just uh, wrap it around, just uh, soak it in a goes and wrap it around, uh, around the uh, eczematous area and uh, compress it with a uh, bandage and keep it for, for a while. That's what the dermatologist 
do that's what i uh, i was told so uh, condis compress uh, reduces the edema reduces the uh, the inflammation and all uh, but uh, uh, if you use in high concentration uh, i think it's damaging to the to uh, granulation tissue and all that and i think it's a bit of uh, bit oxidative is that correct because i have seen a number of wounds people have applied a lot of condis were very purplish wounds and uh, they been applying it for uh, was 6 weeks 2 months and it never healed so uh, then uh, when you uh, hydrate it it heals um i think there are a lot of question about uh, wound care dressings no i think these uh, we can discuss uh, uh when we discuss about the selection of the wound dressings and things like that um someone ask uh, uh, how to remove maggots in the wounds uh what do you say to sit hello to sit yeah, you uh, are right you are yeah, yeah. right uh, what i do is actually uh, now uh, in the clinic uh, it has to be real fast no? so uh, uh, remove the dressing if the, the if there are maggots uh, put a bit of uh, you know uh, uh, 50% dextrose or whatever dextrose we can find and mm -hmm. uh, uh, keep it there and leave leave the patient for a while we'll see about two three patients and uh, then get back throw that away uh, whatever maggots come out will throw them away and uh, uh, get to all the other guys out of the crevices so uh, if we if, uh, say to to see the uh, uh, you know say you want to find the uh, this animal no if you flash the light directly onto the wound they will just uh, try to go away so uh, we uh the the spotlight uh, should be off and uh, or just bounce off a wall so you can uh, easily uh, uh, get to uh, whoever on, uh, is on the wall uh, wound bed and uh, you have to seek the crevices also and uh, get them out yeah, they they lurk uh, in uh, whatever the crevice they, they can find that that uh, wound edges the uh, uh, tiny holes that that are made by this necrotic tissue and slough and all that so all those places are uh, hiding grounds for for these critters so uh, just pull them out remove them and uh, uh, some people use i think turpentine and all but i have never used it uh, because it's sort of corrosive to the wound just uh, then wash it and uh, say if you are uh, you you leave a uh, uh, few animals they will just die off or they i mean they won't actually do any harm they just uh, eat <coughs> some necrotic tissue actually they are doing you a favor Is that correct <laughs> that's what i do actually uh yeah the problem is uh, you know if you don't remove the paper people will panic and the maggot therapy i think is one of the good uh, method to uh, treat the wound so the problem is our you know uh, patients um, uh, complaints is the problem uh, otherwise i think uh, you should you shouldn't kill the, this uh, you know maggots isn't it yeah actually they are they are doing us a big favor we cannot remove uh, necrotic tissue and uh, uh, slough without uh, inflicting pain now they are actually doing it uh, without any pain and they are living on it so uh, 
nothing to worry for us but lo- a lot of worry for the patients though so uh, we are we are we are removing actually what i am doing is i'm just removing uh, uh, whoever i can see and then uh, the crevices a little bit and then just just leave whatever uh, critters are there so uh, so don't actually to for the audience i think you should not uh, worry about maggots maggots are friends so uh, another question uh, please explain about usage of hegaderm plaster so uh, shall i i shall uh, uh, add a little bit on this question the <coughs> tegaderm plaster tegaderm is a name uh, you should be more specific on what 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 the plaster is because tegaderm uh, 3m has is uh, the under uh, under 3m brand name there are quite a number of sub brand names tegaderm is one of them so uh, it's not only tegaderm that does the that does whatever this uh, you, you are uh, you are getting is doing so the oxide also has the same thing so uh, you should not choose the dressing or the plaster uh, from brand name going and asking for for sunlight Uh, cat a and you are getting a wonder light cat a and you are happy because you ask for for uh, for actually what you ask for is saban cat a so uh this uh, the question should be uh asked again with uh, what you want to do with the wound or what is so what is your problem with the wound then you can choose a dressing or a plaster not the tegaderm thing and another aspect on this question is that how much you all are uh, uh, dependent on these uh, these brand names and uh, you know high end dressings i know a lot of people use uh, high end dressings by tain opticot unnecessarily they are just putting so uh so uh, whoever asked that question uh, can you specify what what the, what the dressing is what what to do to the wound what's what the what that plaster is for Is there no answer there uh, uh, there's another question is there any best way to control the oozing from cancer wounds dr hitsiri do you have any uh, experience on uh, cancer wounds actually i have very limited experience on this but uh, the um uh, the actually main thing is actually exfoliate management what we uh, actually will be going to teach you all so we have to use a dressing which uh, absorb uh, the your exfoliate uh, properly uh, and also i have a little doubt i think there's a role of uh, radiotherapy in there uh, but uh, please check it right So, there is there is there is yeah. so the care products that you this one should be uh, really absorbent like hygiene uh, dressing uh, or maybe a simple gauze that you use frequently change it uh, so kind of things yeah yeah uh, if uh another thing is uh, uh, i think uh, professor samadhi also can add, add to this uh, the my experience is that uh, uh, you should not handle handle these wounds a lot then only you go to all these problems of uh, oozing and bleeding and all that so just a uh, quick dressing change uh, and uh, not not damaging any other uh, granulation tissue in the 
uh, in the in the wound bed so uh, so that should be planned uh, from dressing to dressing uh, to put a uh, non adherent layer uh, onto the wound bed and uh, the other thing is uh, elevation and all that uh, also matters to reduce the uh, oozing uh, of course the real reduction of oozing comes from chemo and radio uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, definitive therapy for the uh, this particular cancer professor samadhi uh, would you like to add anything on this yeah uh, i think uh, what you all have said uh, i agree to that uh, as dr kitsiri mentioned um, there is a role in uh, radiotherapy and uh, if it is a cancer cancer thing and what you said also the about the chemotherapy it's i think quite right and we must not handle it you know we have to handle it very carefully and um, not uh, frequent dressings and all kind of things so with the cancer treatment it will uh, it will heal no that's the yeah okay so none of the dressings are going to uh, heal heal a cancer wound it's the cancer therapy that will heal the wound am i correct yes 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 so no point in dressing and dressing and trying various other things uh, on cancer wounds yeah. just to maintain the wound without complications of without complications of the wound mm. uh, until the uh, the effect of chemo radio whatever the uh, definitive treatment for the cancer kicks in mm. and now there is a immune therapy target therapy combination of most of these things there are so many aspects now so i i i heard dr kitsiri mention particularly in cancer wounds um, uh, dressing won't uh, help is is that in his lecture i heard that yeah exactly if there's no progress and you need to think about uh, yeah. the uh, the diagnosis no exactly. yeah so stage of drugs we dilute the betadine up to 3% or less so is it okay have you answered these questions no no it's a new question it ah. just came up what is that what is the question it says that uh, uh, because of the economy because we, we actually we didn't also had the better day to clean the uh, our surgical patient recently so we had to ask pressure to bring the bottles so what they say they what uh, our student says is that uh, they dilute it up to 3% or less um uh, to use the wound uh the, the thing is actually um, um my answer is i mean uh, um so we we, we uh, when we use um dilution is okay dilution is okay but we should uh, properly identify the wound stage um whether the granul about granulation tissue exudate and like that so i think you will learn it later and uh, one other question is why why does anybody want to put betadine to a wound yeah. betadine is a skin preparatory agent isn't it for surgery okay. and all. Mm -hmm. is betadine a dressing because betadine when it touches the tissue it oxidizes whatever it uh encounters and then it becomes water yeah um yeah actually the betadine is the povidine iodine so uh, povidine iodine i think it's is the just iodine in alcohol so both i think are not going i mean it, it very both toxic to the 
cells. Um, yeah. A lot of oxidative stress is given to the wound. And uh, so, as a dressing, it's not advisable to put betadine. So, it's a, mm. uh, whether it's diluted or not, it's, I think it's uh, it was to wash the wound and, you know, if, if there's an infection, uh, I think it should be okay. That's another question for what wounds is acetic acid better? These things will be actually uh, answered in uh, dressing selection, wound preparation, all those lectures. So, uh, another question is: Good uh, proceed is the good procedure when the client is attending surgery better showing in the surgical bed is most. Would be able to prevent surgical infection. Shaving the Dr. Kitsiri, you can answer this question. This is a uh, uh, actually this is about uh, operative. Yeah. yeah, actually, what he what he or she is asking is uh, um, whether the deprenum is the best way to remove the um, slough uh, or whatever the necrosis material. Exactly correct. So it's uh, the best best method, uh, not the slough actually, the necrotic tissue is the best way to remove is surgical debridement, right? So if you remove uh, slough also you can remove, but it should be very gentle and you should care not to damage the uh, present granulation tissue. So I think uh, his answer is that his question is that uh, Shaving the surgical bed uh, with the wound is is the better uh, rather than putting uh, various kind of uh, products. Uh, uh, I think uh, that's what he's asking. Um, and just to answer that question on acetic acid, it's for uh, pseudomonas. Uh, infection. So uh, nothing else. Uh, the acetic acid doesn't cause uh, any other magic. It's uh, just destroys the uh, the pseudomonas, and it's a good agent for pseudomonas. Mm -hmm. Should not be putting gentamicin and all that and all that. Uh, just put acetic acid, and you don't need biotin, acticot, and all that. Just put acetic acid. Okay, I think the that's all what the uh, the questions are. Okay, any anything more to discuss, uh, uh, No, I think uh, uh, we we discussed uh, more than what we expected to discuss. Actually, you know, uh, we had a, a, a lengthy discussion about one hour, and uh, uh, the the uh, lecture was quite explanatory so uh, i think if there's uh, there are no more questions uh, we can wind up isn't it professor samadhi to uh, see actually uh, i think uh, he may have gone uh, uh, because of he has some visitors so then uh, we can wind up the session. So you want to say some some more things, uh, Tusita and Dr. Kissiri? Hello. Sorry, madam. You want to say um, anything else? Can we wind uh, up the okay. session? Yeah, we can wind up the session, actually. Uh, right. Thank so... Uh, Thank you very much for all the participants who have joined uh, today with uh, the, today is the first day. So then there is a small notice actually for the next time. Uh, can you please learn how to rename and join because uh, 
we have accepted uh, certain people and we rename uh, rather than doing those uh, that type of thing. Can you please uh, uh, learn how to do that? Mm, thank you. Majority they have renamed and uh, uh, entered in correct time. Next week we are going to start uh, 9 p.m. next Saturday. Next Saturday is the second day, but uh, we are uh, opening the link from 8:30. So uh, because uh, if you have some time, uh, maybe difficulty of rename and those things, so then uh, you will able to uh, leisurely join at uh, 9 p.m. Uh, once again, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kitsri Senanayaka and Dr. Tusada Kahadua, giving a very uh, fruitful uh, discussion and answering all these uh, uh, questions that they got. Uh, thank you so much. So we, today we can wind up. If you have any questions, uh, you can uh, post to the official WhatsApp group so we will be able to answer those questions. Thank you very much. Over. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you, madam. Good night. Good night, sir and madam. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.